welcome to the secret place. Hello, world. Something big is happening. I need you to know that that is a signal that it is time for you for epic expansion in the Lord. Good evening. Good evening live stream. Good evening, everyone. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Good evening, Secret Place family. Good evening, all those who are worshiping with us today. Lord, we honor you today. We praise you in reverence your holy name for giving us a new reason to worship you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for everything, Lord God, that you have opened up to us today, Lord God. Every miracle that you have opened up to us, Father God. Every opportunity, Father God, for a better job today, we worship you and thank you for it, Father God. We honor you, Lord God, for being our king, for being our Lord, for being our provider, for being our peace, for giving us, Lord God, an advancement, Lord God, on things, Lord God, that you have spoke to us in our prayer time. We want to honor you for that, Lord God. We want to praise you, Father God, for giving us an advancement in our career, Father God giving us an opportunity, Lord God, to get back right with you, Lord God. We want to repent, Father God, and thank you, Lord God, that you didn't judge us, but that you loved us, Lord God, by sending your son to that cross to shed his blood. We thank you, Father God, for that blood shed, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that we walk in victory, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us the abundance, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you are pulling things out of us, Lord God, that we didn't even know we had inside of us. Holy Spirit, we pray over the word. We honor you and thank you, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus over our pastor, Father God. Pastor Troy L. Campbell today, Lord God. We bind any spirit that tries to rise up. We come against the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that the word will be powerful, Father God. That it will bring forth life, Father God, and conviction. That it will help us grow in your word, Lord God. That our ears will be open, Father God that we will pay attention to every PowerPoint, Holy Spirit, that you are allowing us to pay attention to. Lord, we thank you today for all that are watching, Father God, all over the world. Hello, world. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people, Father God, will hear something unusual tonight, Father God, that will uplift their faith, that will sharpen their walk with you, that will allow them to see the word in a whole different way, Father. We are thanking you for that to happen tonight, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for everything, Lord God, that has become new in our life. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us a new memory, Father God. A memory to remember your word. A memory to love our brothers and our sisters. A memory, Father God, to allow us to walk in the integrity of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we are thanking you, Father God, and we plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, 
up on live stream. We plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over the secret place today. We plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, over the whole entire world today, Lord God, that you will give us the wisdom, Father God, to be wise, Lord God, and not step into the trap of the enemy. Lord, we want to thank you for that, Lord God, that you have shed light, Father God, in the dark place right now, that you have shed your light, Father God, upon our path, Father God, that you have shed your light, Father God, in the place that our souls will touch. Devil, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke you. And we bind you right now. Father, Establish something within us, Lord God, so that we can worship you, Father God. That we do have the liberty, Father God, to honor you and reverence you, Father God, wherever we are at. Lord, I pray that a worship, Father God, will begin to happen, Father God, wherever your people are at. I pray that a praise, Father God, will begin to rise up, Father God, wherever the redeemed are at, Lord God. I pray that divine healing will break forth, Father God, wherever your people are at. So, Lord, help us right now, Lord God. Give us an opportunity, Lord God, to gather ourselves together, Lord God, and get back on the good fight of faith, Lord God. Lord, we pray for everyone who's recovering, Father God, from sickness and disease right now, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for miracles, Father God, in the lives of your people that are fighting asthma right now, Lord God. We pray victory, Father God, over your people, Father God, that are suffering, Father God, right now and being restored, Father God, from heart attacks right now, Lord God, and diabetes, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, that your people will find their strength, Father God, over those, Father God, who are dealing with this COVID-19. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God. Lord, we pray that they walk in victory instead of defeat, Father God. Lord, I pray that you have given them a new, Father God, mindset, Father God. Renew their mind, Lord God. Renew, Father God, their rejoicing right now, Father God. Renew, Father God, they praise, Father God. Renew their prayer life, Father God. Renew, Father God, everything that they are coming in contact with, Lord God, right now, Lord God. Lord, we pray for resurrection, Father God, of every dream and every vision, Father God of your people right now, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that there's no lack in their lives, Father God. Lord, we pray for every country right now, Lord God, that they will experience, Father God, the power of the anointing and the Holy Spirit right now. Lord, we pray, Father God, for a Pentecostal move to break forth all over this country, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. And we honor you and we thank you for it, God, right now, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that your glory, Father God, will fill the sanctuary, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that your glory, Father God, will fill your people's house right now, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for supernatural miracles, Father God, to be birthed in the earth right now, Father God. Supernatural healing, Father God. Supernatural, Father God, financial breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Supernatural peace, Father God, upon your people, Lord God. We thank you for it right now. We celebrate you and we honor you, Holy Spirit, for allowing your spirit to fall upon us right now. God, we give you the glory for it right now.
Oh, Lord, we give you your glory. We thank you, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting, Father God, homes and houses and townhomes, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting tents, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting those sleeping up under the freeway, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting those, Father God, in the penitentiary, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting those, Father God, in the youth authority, Father God, that your glory, Father God, is hitting those right now, Lord God, in foster homes, Father God. Lord, we pray that your glory, Father God, hit the emergency room right now, Lord God. Let the doctors be amazed, Lord God, of your power, Father God. Let the doctors be amazed, Lord God, of that baby right now, Father God, in the nursery, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Father God, your power, Lord God, up over every medical facility right now, Lord God. We pray, Father God, that your people will be delivered, Father God, from every curse and from every bondage in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we break off every generational curse that tries to tag along, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father God. Thank you for your power, Lord God. Thank you for your glory right now, Lord God. Thank you for the blessing, Father God. Allow it to hit homes, Lord God. Allow it to hit homes, Father God. Let something unusual happen in the earth, Father God where your people will begin to praise you and magnify you all in the middle of the streets, Lord God. Lord, you said that your people would dream dreams and see visions. Lord, I pray that this is the hour where they begin to experience that, Lord God. Experience the unusual miracle, Father God. Experience the blind eyes being opened. Experience, Father God, those who are crippled, Begin to be healed by your glory. Experience, Father God, those who cannot talk. Allow them to begin to worship you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for that right now. And we honor you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in the secret place today, Father God. Have your way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, and amen. We bless the Lord, hallelujah, at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouths, hallelujah, and glory to the Lamb of God. God bless you, live stream. Thank you for worshiping with us tonight. We're excited to share the word of God and to worship and pray with you. We are absolutely whew, flabbergasted, excited. Just overcome with joy, knowing that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I want to welcome you. Um, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Um, we just want to bless the Lord. We're excited that he is a good God and that he is almighty and that he's all powerful. The Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bless the Lord. I want to encourage you to start a watch party. I want to encourage you to get yourself in position to hear the word of God, to receive the word of God, and to do your part, hallelujah, in what God is establishing in the earth. I want you to know that the Lord is up to something major, and you are a significant part of it. You're very significant in what the kingdom of God is rolling out and what the kingdom of God is producing and doing right now. And we're absolutely grateful that we are his redeemed and that we are chosen, that the blood of the lamb is upon us and that we have the right to the tree of life, that we have the ability to access his grace and his mercy and his love and his peace and his joy, his, his, his forever 
kindness just towards us. How many of you are grateful that the Lord is just always merciful and kind, just so, so gracious? The Bible says, new mercies I see, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Hallelujah. So we're excited about those new mercies, and we're going to get right into the Word of God. We're going to open up our Bibles. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. We're going to read the book of Isaiah first, book of Isaiah chapter number 30. We're going to read two sets of scriptures, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 12 through 15. Isaiah chapter number 30, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 12 through 15. I'll say it once more. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 12 through 15, and then also one verse in the book of Luke. That will be Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. That's Luke chapter 10, verse number 19. So, uh, if you would like, you can stand for the reading of the word. It is our custom to do so. I know you're at home, but let's, 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 let's stay as much on point as possible because we will one day be able to worship the Lord together again in person, and we won't have to get back used to it because we've been doing it all along. Amen? I'm going to share a message with you tonight from a subject called A New Application of Power. A New Application of of power. Isaiah 30, verse number one. The Bible says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse number two, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at zone, and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. We'll go to verses 12 through 15. Verse number 12 says, Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirt to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. Verse number 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Now to the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 19. The Bible says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, 
And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Again, tonight, I want to talk to you about a new application of power. Every human being born has power. We all look at and define power in different ways. And sometimes because of where we are born at, sometimes because of the way we look at ourselves, sometimes the way we perceive who we are, what we have and what we don't have, can blur our vision and make us think that we don't have power. Or it could make us think that we have less power than someone else. And I want you to understand tonight that the Lord has charged me to come and let you know that you have power. Come on, I want somebody to say that to yourself right now. Come on, say, I have power. Come on, say, I have power. Power. Come on, right there in, in your room or in your car, at your work desk. Come on, say, I have power. Come on, say, no matter what it looks like, I have power. No matter what it feels like, I have power. No matter what somebody said about me, I have power. No matter how people treat me, come on, say, I have power. Come on, say, I was born with power. Come on, say, I, I have power. Come on, say, I have God-given power power. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody needs to get that in your spirit right now. Come on. You need to declare that you have power. Come on. Say, I have power. I declare it right now. I have power. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I have power. It is important. It is significant. It is important imperative that you believe and trust in the word of God because Jesus comes out here and he's talking to his disciples and he tells them behold I give you power hmm. these are the followers of Christ these are the disciples of Christ and this is one of the scriptures that we uh, pulled from on Sunday and we know that Jesus was sending them into uncharted territory and I want you to understand that just because you don't know where you're going that doesn't mean you don't have power just because you don't know exactly how everything is going to turn out you don't you don't you, you don't have to think that you don't have power just because you're not exactly sure when it's going to unfold how it's going to unfold one thing you have to believe and recognize and receive right now in your soul is that you have power. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that Jesus, glory to God, would not send you into territory to take down demons and devils if you didn't have power. I want you to understand that when God calls your name, that when God anoints you, that when God puts his hand on you, that when God gives you a mission, when he gives you a vision, when he gives you a calling, an assignment, an anointing, when God Almighty causes you to pick up what he created you for, when God gave you purpose, God gave you power. Hallelujah. It's impossible to accomplish purpose if you don't have power. And I want you to understand that God knows that you need power. So the God that we serve gave you purpose, whoo, and he also so gave you power. Hallelujah. I want to I want to put that in your soul right now. I want you to feel that in your spirit right now. I want you to understand that you have purpose and you have power. Hallelujah. You have purpose, glory to God, and you have power. Hallelujah. Uncharted territory. I don't know exactly where I'm going. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but I tell you one thing that I do know. I know I have power. Glory to God. I know I have purpose. Glory to God. Behold, I give you power. Woo! Glory to God. That scripture right there stirs my soul up. Jesus said, behold, I give you power. Woo! Jesus, the master, the Messiah, the creator, the maker. Hallelujah. The word made flesh says, behold, I give you power. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about power uh, of someone's opinion. I'm not talking about the power that your friends give you when they show you attention. I'm not talking about the power that those people give you when they give you a title. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, hallelujah, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. He said, 
behold, I give you power. And I'm just trying to shatter low self-esteem right now. I'm just working on shattering the way you see yourself because you need to understand that Jesus said, behold, I give you power. Hallelujah. Jesus wants you to know tonight that you have power power over circumstances. You have power over demons and devils. You have power over cycles that have seemingly overtaken your life. You have power over sickness and disease. You have power over frustration. You have power over lack financially. You have power to walk by faith and not by sight. You have power to break out of everything that's trying to hold you down. I just want you to step into your power right now. Come on, live stream. Step into your power right now. Step into your praise right now. Step into your worship right now. Your power is in your praise. Your power is in your obedience. Your power is in your worship. Your power is in your mouth. Hallelujah. There is power coming out of you right now. If you open up your mouth and give God some praise right now, you would begin to feel the power of the Lord swirling all through your house. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let the power of the kingdom of God be loosed in every household right now. Let the power of the redeemed of the Lord say so right now. Let the power of his kingdom come out of your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water came tonight to talk to you about a new application of power. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah was prophesying to Judah. I, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Oh, God, I love your revelation and your divine information. I love the spirit of wisdom and revelation and how you just pour out your spirit upon all those who desire to receive it. You sent the prophet Isaiah in chapter 30. He sent the prophet Isaiah in chapter 30 to talk to Judah. We all know that Judah, hallelujah, means praise. I want to I want to read something to you. Judah means praise. And Isaiah opens up in Isaiah 30 and chapter and verse number one. He says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that that walk down to Egypt and have not asked of my mouth to strengthen themselves or form alliances. Whew. Oh, I hope you hear me tonight. Talking about a new application of power. The, the prophet Isaiah is sent to Judah to let Judah know. Now, hold on a minute. Judah means praise. Woo. Hallelujah. Judah means that he shall be praised. Hallelujah. God is saying that we have to caution ourselves because if we're going to walk into a new application of power, then we're going to have to keep ourselves in a position whereby our praise is not in alliance. Woo! Hallelujah. We have to make sure that our praise is not in alliance with anything other than God. What are you praising? Hallelujah. What do you allow? your mouth to praise? What do you allow your mind to praise? What do you allow your body to praise? What do you allow your time to praise and worship? God is saying to us tonight that Judah, you are guilty of coming into an alliance or a political relationship with Egypt. Hold on a minute right there. Woo! Egypt, Egypt, God here has the prophet to go and talk to Isaiah so he can go and talk to Judah and let Judah know that you have entered into a relationship, hallelujah, with Egypt. Now, Egypt represents the world, and what God is saying to us tonight that Egypt, hallelujah, is that Egypt and Judah are not supposed to be in a relationship, hallelujah. And God wants to understand 
and know right now that he is allowing us to see where he has charged the prophet Isaiah to go and talk with Judah to let Judah know that your praise should not be in an alliance, hallelujah, with the world. I'm talking about a new application of power. God is saying unto us tonight, he's speaking prophetically tonight, and he's saying that we are not to allow our praise to get intermingled with the world. We are not to praise what the world says. We are not to praise what the world does. We are not to praise and pattern our lives after the manner of Egypt. God said, Judah, you are guilty, hallelujah, of forming a political alliance with Egypt, with the world, because you think that's going to prosper you. God is talking to us tonight. While churches and governments are at odds with each other, while people all over the globe, some want to go back into church, some are saying, I'm not going into church. Whatever your position is, all I'm saying to everybody is that God never intended for his people, hallelujah, to let the world determine what your next move is. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. I see people all at the beach and all on the news saying, and, and the newscasters are asking them, why don't you have your mask on? And they're saying, I don't have it on because the president doesn't have it on, so I don't need to wear one. And if I would or if I could, I would submit to you and say, if the president jumped off the cliff. Hallelujah. If the president jumped off the bridge, if the president did something crazy, does that mean that you're going to do it too? I want to hold, I want to raise up some people who know how to think for themselves and who won't allow themselves to intermingle the power of their praise with the ways of this world. Just because the world says it's okay to go back out, you better think for your own self. You better to have some common sense you better open up your mind and you better be sober and vigilant because you only get one life if you're going to do something do it because you're going to do it don't do it because you're influenced by somebody don't do it because you want to keep up with everybody else don't do it because you don't want to look like the eyeball out don't do it just because people in high positions of influence and authority are doing it do it because that's what you believe is right in your heart to do don't you give no one else the power to make a decision for how you choose to live your life other than you Yeah, we're talking about a new application of power and the Lord. He told Judah, he told Judah that they were going to fall and be shattered like a potter's vessel. He told Judah that they were going to suddenly come from their high place, their lofty place. They were going to suddenly fall from where they are because they intermingled their praise because they put their praise in a political alliance Woo! with the world talking about a new application of power tonight and Jesus comes in and says behold I give you power he's talking to his disciples I want to tie this up for you he says behold I give you power to do what Woo! to do what I give you power to do what I give you power. See, he's telling us the purpose for the power. I have a slide for that. Can we put it up? He's talking about the purpose of the power. Here's the purpose of the power. Number one, to tread on serpents. Number two, to tread on scorpions. Number three, to tread over all the power of the enemy. I just want to say it one more time. Number one, to tread on serpents. Number two, to tread on scorpions. Number three, 
to, to tread over all, not some, over all the power of the enemy. Thank you. And that's why we're sharing about tonight a new application of power. Because the issue is not that you don't have power. The issue is how you apply your power. The issue, uh, yeah, we're going to get down to the nitty and the gritty tonight. The issue is not whether you actually have power. The issue is not whether I actually have power. The issue is really how I choose to apply my power. And God was showing me that although we have power, some of us are not applying it or executing it or administering it the way that is supposed to be administered, executed, or laid out. And so God wants to teach us tonight about a new application of power, not an old application of power, not the way they used to handle power, not the way people from the last era handled power, not the way Dr. Martin Luther King had power. Dr. Martin Luther King had power in his generation because he used the power the way God wanted him to use it in his generation. But I wonder if we're using the power today, hallelujah, the way God wants us to use it in our generation glory 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 to the lamb of god first of all in order for us to go further in this scripture it is by necessity that i break down a couple of definitions for you jesus said and behold i give you power you with me you with me live stream you with me he said behold i give you power he said this is something that i give to you i looked up that word give and to give means Permission. Woo! Hallelujah. That took me all the way back to when I wanted to go on a field trip, somebody. Come on, hallelujah. It, it takes me back to when I wanted to go on a field trip as a kid. I knew that I didn't have permission to go on that field trip if I didn't have a signature from my parents or my guardian, whomever it was that was supposed to sign it, who would give me then permission to leave where I was and to go into uncharted territory to do what I needed to do. And God showed me in that instant that he's already signed the permission slip. I want you to know tonight that God told me to let you know that he has given you, he has permitted you to give permission. means to give permission. It means to give clearance. It means to give authorization. It means that God is saying to us tonight, behold, I have already authorized you. I have already given you clearance. I have already given you permission to have power Woo! yeah hey listen to me God is saying I've already given you permission oh ooh, my oh my what would you do what would you do if you were sitting at home frustrated because you thought you didn't have your permission slip and all along it was already tucked into your lunch bag it was already tucked into your back pocket you're sitting at school frustrated waiting for somebody to call waiting for somebody to bring your permission slip but God has already given you clearance to go where he said that you need to go. I came to tell somebody tonight, God has already given you clearance. He has already given you permission. He has already given you power to tread on serpents. Woo! Hey, already gave it to you. You already have it. Stop wondering if you have it and tell yourself, I have permission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell yourself, I have permission. That's a good part right there to declare to yourself. Come on, declare, I have permission. I have authorization. I have clearance. Come on, I have authority. I've been given the go-ahead. I have consent and approval. Woo! You with me? A new application of power. So he says, behold, I give you power. I give you permission. I give you approval. I give you huh, consent. I, the Lord of lords and the king of kings, I give you permission to whoop the devil. I give you permission to stand on his head. I give you permission to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I give you consent to walk into the enemy's camp and take back everything that he stole from you. I give you permission tonight to be restored. I give you permission tonight to walk in authority. I give you permission. 
permission tonight to stand where people wouldn't even understand and what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I give you permission to reap your harvest. I give you permission to be healed. I give you permission to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. He said, I give you permission. I give you permission. Now watch this, because this is one of the most interesting parts that's going to take the, the responsibility off of God and put it all in your lap. He says, behold, I give you power. That word power, by definition, means he said, I give, give is consent. That's that. But that word power means the power of choice. I give you the liberty to choose. Yeah, yeah. I give you the liberty to choose. I give you the liberty to make this decision. I'm giving you, I'm giving you the power to choose whether you want to tread on service. I'm giving you the power to choose whether you want to get everything back that the enemy stole from you. I'm giving you power to choose that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm giving you power to choose. You've got to choose it if you want to use it. Hallelujah. You've got to choose to accept God's consent. You've got to choose to accept God's power. You have to choose to accept his authority and his dominion in the kingdom of God by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. You got to choose to use the blood, baby boy. You got to choose to use the blood, baby girl. You got to choose to activate your power and your fire, and you got to choose to use the word of God like a sword to go out and slay every demonic entity and authority that's coming against your generation. You got to Choose to use your slingshot, David. Woo! Just because you have it doesn't mean it's going to get used. You have to choose to use the power. Tonight I'm talking about a new application of power. <laughs> Now watch this. The purpose of power, we said. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I said, Lord, I said, it would be different if you said, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, comma, scorpions. Comma. But he said, serpents and scorpions, which tells me that they're grouped up semantically which means he's referring to them in one way he said I give you power not just over serpent yeah but I give you power over serpents and scorpions. A serpent was in the garden. A serpent beguiled Adam and Eve. A serpent stole their estate. He tricked them. God says, behold, hallelujah, if you choose to use it, I give you power over deception. God is saying to us tonight, he's saying, I give you power over serpents and scorpions. The serpent was a crafty little creature. God is saying, I'm giving you power to choose whether you want to use my dominion, my wisdom, and my authority to overcome deception and every evil that the enemy brings at you, all of the craftiness of the devil. God said, I give you power. Woo! I give you power over that stuff. I give you power over every conversation that's trying to trick you. I give you power over every conversation that's trying to beguile you. I give you power over every conversation that's trying to take you out of the place that God set you in. I give you the power to choose to use my word against the enemy so that you will not have to lose what you have and start over because you listened to the serpent. Talking about a new application of power. Now, you know, 
He said, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Let me, let me break tread down for you. Let me, let me break down the word tread for you. To tread means to crush. Huh. It means to deform. Hmm. It means to macerate. It means to mango and squash. He said, behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents. I give you power to deform, to change the form of the serpent and the scorpion, to mangle it, to squash it, to twist it all up. Behold, I give you power if you choose to use it, to tread. And when I saw the word tread, I said, wait a minute, tread and if you're going to crush something with your feet, that's like walking. And God said, yeah, we walk by faith and not by sight. He said, behold, I give you power through faith to tread on scorpions and serpents. I give you power. I said, God, you keep putting these serpents and scorpions together. What does that mean? Y'all ready to jump in a little bit deeper? Hallelujah. If you're not ready or not, here we go. But God said that serpents and scorpions represent poisonous systems. Ooh. Okie dokie. God said, behold, I give you power to tread on poisonous, venomous, corrupt, deceptive, deceiving, manipulative, bribing systems. I said, wait a minute, Lord, hold on, hold on. How did you just jump from this to that? He said, scorpions lurk in walls. The Lord said, I'm giving you power over stuff that you can't even see lurking. Mm. The Lord said, I'm giving you power over laws that are ready to be passed to oppress you that you don't even see lurking, hiding in the walls, ready to jump out and sting you after you voted for it. God said, behold, I give you power over everything that's lurking, that wants to sting your life, every system of this world that is crooked and chaotic and deceptive. God said, behold, I give you the power if you choose to use it to tread to crush it to deform it to mangle it to macerate it i give you power to walk by faith on every system that's lurking in the wall and what about the serpent i give you power over every slick silver tongued business deal i give you power over every deceptive lying conversation i give you power over every small print that's meant to lie and deceive you i give you power It's a system. It's a system. And the thing that the two have in common is this, because I had to research this all the way out. The things that scorpions and serpents have in common is that they're both highly venomous, both highly poisonous, and they have been able to survive and evolve for years. I came to tell somebody tonight that we're going to learn a new application of power so that we can take authority over stuff that's been able to evolve over the years, over laws that have been tricky, over systems that have been tricky, over stuff that's been able to hide. God said, behold, I give you power to be able to tread on it. I'm giving my people power to deform it, power to macerate it, power to make sure that when you snatch this thing down, when you tread on that thing, which your faith we walk by faith and not by sight when you tread on that thing God is saying I'm gonna cause you to squash it I'm gonna make sure that another generation won't get touched by this foolishness if you will rise up in your faith and believe that you have power that you have a choice watch this I'm gonna say this part real slow because I I want you to hear it I did a study on scorpions and serpents. And one of the studies that I did is National Geographic or some other scientific organization 
was doing a study on these reptiles and arachnids. And it was wondering, why do they have so much poison in them? Why so much? They said that one particular snake had enough venom in it to kill 250,000 mice in one bite. And they kept trying to figure out why. Because they know how, how animals are made and they know how, how, how things happen and how they evolve. They study the characteristics and what they used to have versus what they do have. And what they said is that these particular animals were able to evolve and develop venom for the kind of prey that they want to go after, the kind of environment that they're going to be in. And then it says they have so much venom because they have to compensate or make up for the characteristics that they don't have. The reason why the devil is so mad at you and the reason why the systems are so corrupt is because it's trying to make up for what it doesn't have. It doesn't have compassion. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't love people. So it it wants to be as venomous as possible because it knows it said that the serpent and the and the and the um the scorpion knows that if it doesn't get you on the first thing If it don't get put enough venom in you on the first thing, it knows that it done messed up. And I just want to serve the devil notice tonight. I want you to know that the Bible says that I have power to tread on serpents. And the Bible says that you shall by no means harm me. So you go ahead and bite and sting and hide and lurk all you want to. There is a rising generation that's standing up in the kingdom of God, in the authority of his power and in the fire of the Holy Ghost and we are not backing up from your systems. We have been stung. We have been bitten. We have been oppressed. I'm speaking for every minority in this world. We have been beat down. We have been hard pressed but we're not crushed. We have been told that we are nobody but I'm going to lift up my voice tonight and let you know that you can call me a nobody all you want to. Jesus gave me power. Woo! Hallelujah. He gave me power. And whatever you say about me is not stronger than what he says about me. He gave me power to tread on you. And I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on worshiping. I'm going to keep on teaching. I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on prophesying. I'm going to keep on. Because he gave me power over you. And I'm going to keep on doing it until I see the fullness of the manifestation. I'm going to tread on you. I'm going to tread on you. I'm going to emaciate you. I'm going to crush you. I'm going to destroy you in faith. I'm going to walk on you. Woo! Yeah. I'm going to crush your head. Go ahead and bruise my heel if you want to. But I'm going to crush your head. Hallelujah. I'm going to step on your head, devil. I walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, I'm not going to stop what I see. I'm not going to let what I see, hallelujah, to make me stop believing in what I don't see. I'm looking for a systemic victory. I'm looking for a victory, hallelujah, that's going to cause the whole system to either shut down or change. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm talking about a new application of power. Now watch this. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, to tread on serpents, and over all the power of the enemy. I'm cooking now. I'm cooking now. I'm cooking now. The, the fire is at about three quarters the high. Hallelujah. The pot is boiling. I can smell the gumbo from upstairs. Glory to God. Salvation is coming. Restoration is coming. I see the angels of God surrounding people right now. I see hot extractions in the spirit. I see people getting snatched. Hallelujah. Out of suicide. I see people getting snatched. Hallelujah. Out of low self-esteem. I see depression running. I see COVID-19 saying, please send me into the pit. 
plagues. Uh oh, I see disease and cancer. Asking the Lord, say, You're the Lord. Say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. And yeah, you know me too. My name is Pastor Troy L. Period Campbell, a representative of the Lord God Almighty. And I came to expose every system in this world for as long as I have breath in my body that is unjust and corrupt in the name of Jesus the Christ. And that ain't his last name. It means the anointed one. Watch this. Behold. I give you power. Here we go. I'm about to give it to you now. I give you power. I give you power. I give you power to tread on serpents. I give you power to tread on systems. I give you power. And this is where God really began to give me a different level of revelation. He said, behold, I give you power. This is what the power is for. It's, it's to tread on poisonous and venomous systems and laws that keep people down that keep people afraid that intimidate people because the bite is so hard because the stung almost killed you you don't want to go up against the system no more but God says behold I give you power to tread on it and I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus I'm praying for God to reinvigorate and reactivate your faith tonight to where you believe that anything you have to stand up against that you have the power to choose to use the glory of God the blood of the lamb the word of your testimony and every weapon in the word of God he said behold I I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's where it got me because usually we would think the word power there means the same thing as the word power that he gave us. No. He said, behold, I give you power, which is a choice. I give you authority. I give you a choice over all the power of the enemy. Well, what does that power mean? <laughs> Two different kinds. This is what we call a new application of power. So God says, behold, I give you power, a choice, over all the power of the enemy. So you have to choose to believe that you have power over all the power of the enemy. And it doesn't stop. With cancer, diabetes, and gangs. It doesn't stop with bullets and knives and, and, and tail bearing and backstabbing. It doesn't stop with corruption and crookedness. It doesn't stop with governments. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. God said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. That means you have power over every principality. You have power over what's flying over your house. You have power over the invisible enemy that's coming against your children. You have power over it all in the name of Jesus you have power behold I give you power I give you a choice over all the power of the enemy here it goes here it goes I give you a choice I've given you permission I've given you my consent that you have power basically to go ride on the enemy you got power. You got to choose whether you want to get on your knees and, and worship me so that I can defeat the enemy. You have to choose whether you want to be consistent and excellent in the word of God. Uh, if you want to study to show yourself approved, you have to choose to do it. Behold, I give you a choice. Power over all the power of the enemy. That power of the enemy means ability so behold I give you a choice to exercise your power we're talking about a new application of power I give you a choice to exercise your power over every ability that the enemy has well you say wait a minute pastor the enemy is pretty crafty the enemy is pretty powerful he even transforms himself as an angel of light behold I give you power even over devils that transform themselves as angels of light behold I give you power over devils who come in meetings to trick you and take advantage of you behold I give you power over governmental demons and devils I give you power over economic devils I give you power I don't know if you believe you have it or not, but I do. 
And that ain't even the tip of the iceberg. That's just the beginning. This is the one that blew my mind right here. Behold, I give you power. I give you a choice. Not just over the power or the ability that the enemy has. But this is the one that got me. He said, behold, I give you power over all the power. And the next definition for power as it relates to the enemy is influence that comes from riches and wealth. Mm. Yeah, you, you sitting in your house and you're thinking, how, how, what, what, what can I do with all this corruption going on? What can I do? And Jesus says, behold, I give you power. Behold, I give you a choice. Behold, I give you a prayer language. Behold, I give you a worship. Behold, I give you a relationship with me. Behold, wherever two or three are gathered, behold, I give you a choice. Hallelujah. You and your prayer, you and your action, you and your faith, you and your belief, you have power to take authority over the influence that that comes from riches and wealth. Let me tell you something, people of God. All of the wealthy trickster billionaires and millionaires in this world don't have more power than you. God said, behold, the power that I give you is more powerful than the influence that comes from riches and wealth. You have more power than they do. Remember in the beginning, in Isaiah, Judah was getting rebuked because Judah looked at their power. And Judah said, I need to go get into a political and an economic relationship with them because it looks like they have more power than me. And I just want to warn you right now. I just want to warn you to check yourself before you riggedy riggedy wreck yourself. I just want to warn you right now because if you're looking at other stuff in the world and thinking it has more power than you, I want you to recheck and re-examine your eyesight, your insight, your vision because God is telling Judah tonight, God is saying you stop trying to form political alliances with people because it looks like they have more power than you just because they're in a high place God is saying I gave you a choice to have more power than they do no matter how much bank account they have and this is something that you have to believe because if you don't believe it you can't do what God told me to give you next if you don't believe you see because God was upset with Judah because Judah entered into a relationship it was a political relationship. It was an economic relationship. It was a relationship based on what they saw somebody else have. And, and, and those types of relationships are filled with corruption and bribery. It's when somebody uses their position, hallelujah, to get what they want illegally. Bribery is when somebody gives someone else a reward mm, for favorable outcomes in their direction. I want you to know right now that some of the things that you're drawn to, some of the things that you think have more power than you, it's in the midst of God stripping it from everything it has. God said, behold, I gave you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and scorpions, excuse me, and I want you to know tonight that the systems of this world that have been biting and oppressing and defaming people for years, that have been taking advantage of people, that have just done whatever they wanted to do, how they oppress and how they leave out access, God says all of those systems, he's saying every serpent-like system and every scorpion-like system that's been biting and stinging people, he said the people of God, if you have the faith to believe. He said, I'll put you in position so that you can cause those walls to fall. But you're going to have to apply your power in a new way. And this is how I'm this, this is the part right here I wanted to get to. A new application of power. Application means execution. Application means to administer. Application means to lay it out. It, it, it means to do what you do. A new do what you do of power. A new way of doing it. God is saying, God told me to say, 
You know, we, 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 we talk a lot. We, we share posts a lot. We send text messages a lot. We, we, we talk about what we don't like. Even how that man, that video surfaced about that man in Minnesota who they had their knee on his neck and he died. That video just surfaced yesterday or today. And now all four of those officers are fired because it got exposed. I want you to know we're supposed to share it. I want you to know we're supposed to be upset. I want you to know we're supposed to be frustrated. But that's not where we stop at. Real boy cotton. You want to talk about real boycotting for a minute you want to hear some holy ghost wisdom on what god is saying about our generation god told me to go back and study the civil rights movement he said dr king and the civil rights movement marched because i told it to march i said okay i got you god i got you he said they did sit-ins at the counter because i, I inspired them to sit in because that was the move that their generation was supposed to make to bring down the serpents and scorpions that was hassling them he said but the problem that your generation always comes up against is every time a new serpent or a different serpent or a different scorpion comes up your generation wants to do what dr king and his generation did but god is saying i'm giving you a a new whoo I'm giving you a new application of power they applied or executed their power by marching but every time you come up against something you can't step out of your era to go get a solution from theirs no God they they, they were inspired to march they had a vision to march. But every time something happens in our generation, we just automatically assume that we're supposed to go stand in front of the business, that we're supposed to go boycott, that we're not supposed to shop on a certain day. Hold on a minute. Let me tell you what the glory, the glory of the Lord told me. He said, tell your generation that the answer, hallelujah, to the injustice in your generation is not going to be to do what Dr. King and the SL, SCLC did. He said the answer to the injustice and the systems that are venomous and poisonous in your generation is not going to be to do what they did, hallelujah. It's going to be to come to me and pray and to talk to me you want to talk about the wealth of the wicked being transferred into the hands of the righteous you ain't got to go march in front of nothing if everybody that's a minority or that's being mistreated just took their money out of a bank that the bank woo! <laughs> yeah they, they, they'll deal with you for a minute they'll deal with you standing in front of their building they'll deal with you pissed off and frustrated and marching in front of their building but you get to talking about uh, billions of people or millions of people pulling their money out and bringing their money somewhere else into a bank that represents their values that represents their community and it gets deeper than that God told me son of man God said not only are you going to have to teach people and encourage people to consider where they bank at and to consider going somewhere else? God told me, man of God, believe me for a credit union. <laughs> hey! God told me, he said, you ain't going to win this one by marching. You're going to win this one by ownership. We have, a, we have a, 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 a slide for that. It's called boycott by ownership. You're going to have to own your house now. You're going to have to own the store now. You're going to have to own the credit union now. You're going to have to own them all now. It's time for us to stand up and own Where's that slide at? Boycott by ownership. Did it come through or not? Didn't come through. My Jesus. It's all right. It's okay. Hallelujah. God said, God said, as long as we share messages on Facebook, as long as we talk about how enraged we are, those systems are going to continue to bite and sting. But when we start pulling our money out, uh, when we start snatching our resources out, uh, when we start pulling back, hallelujah, when we start 
choosing what we're going to spend with, who we're going to spend with, what we're going to watch. Hallelujah. When we start building, hallelujah, what we used to go shopping, when we start owning schools, when we start owning banks, when we start owning sports arenas, when we start owning performing arts centers, when we start owning. Talk all you want. Talk all you want. Everybody doesn't have to build one, but everybody has to be a part of not supporting what don't support you. Why let somebody use your money to oppress you? Even if it's just $271, they're using it to oppress you. You can't qualify for a loan. You can't get a house. You can't even get no money from your bank. You got to go to a predatory lender. The payday loan, look, 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 look. You got to think about where you putting your money at. Your money is your power. I'm talking about a new application of power. Your voice is your power. Your brain is your power. How you think is your power. Where you go is your power. God said this is about a new execution of power. A new one. Thinking differently. Doing differently. Look up your bank. I dare you to look it up. I dare you to find out who owns it, what they stand for, what they believe in. It might blow your mind. I dare you to look up your grocery store. Uh, uh, I dare you to look up your favorite store that you shop with. I dare you to look up what they believe in, who they support, what they stand for. I'm telling you, one of the biggest votes you have is where you spend your money. And it ain't going to happen by everybody not shopping on one day. This thing has to keep on going. You ain't going to break no system by just not everybody doing something one day. You got, the Bible says when the spirit is cast out, it goes around looking for another place to inhabit. And when it doesn't find it, in other words, if we cast out that system but don't put a new one in its place, <laughs> it's coming back stronger. Ha, and it's going to be worse than it was before. I want to give you some information real quick. I was reading the Harvard Gazette, looking up some information, and God told me through this article, this article said, the article is called, it, it was called, The Rich and the Rest, The Cost of Inequality. <laughs> it, it was called The Rich and the Rest, The Cost of Inequality, and it talked about the, the way that the, the rich wield their wealth. It said that it's almost making it like Americans that are not rich are voiceless because the, politi the increasing political power of the rich is able to wield itself over society. And even if you vote, the rich will spend money. to get it to swing in their direction. <laughs> talking about a new application of power. I'm talking about executing our power differently and thinking about it and being open to some different strategies and, and not always being quick to go running the street with a sign in your hand, but to start sitting down and thinking about where you're spending your money at, who you bank with, what they stand for. There's so many Harvard Gazette started talking about corruption. And I want to give you just a little bit of information before we close. It talked about the economic and political inequities. It talked about fiscal inequality. And then it went on, it went on to talk about corruption, about the dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. Fraudulent conduct by those in power. It broke it down all the way and talked about how much contributions that different people receive when they're running for office and that who those contributions come from and how many families that are wealthy contribute. And they, and they, and they, and they traced it and showed that when wealthy families contribute at super high levels, laws get swung in their direction. Laws. Laws. Opportunities, ordinances, contracts. 
I want to, look, the top three, the top three lobbyists in Washington, D.C. Listen to this. The top three lobbyists in Washington, D.C. Number one is Big Pharma, drug manufacturing. Number two is technology corporations. And number three, educational institutions. It may have changed. This was a couple of years ago, but that was the rank that they gave it. Big Pharma has the most lobbyists in, look, look, look. The medical pharmacies have more lobbyists in D.C. than anybody. Give big contributions so we can keep charging for this medicine. So we can keep making up stuff that if you take it, your ears might start bleeding. You might die. One of the, what they say, the side effects might be bleeding, might be death, might be loss of sight, loss of hearing. Man, we keep your medicine. And then technology and educational institutions, mainly the colleges. Do you all understand now why about the end of 2019 or somewhere up in there, all of these wealthy people got caught bribing institutions because they were systems that were built on serpents and scorpions and God is exposing all of that stuff because they were able to use their wealth to swing a decision in their favor to get their children into places that they shouldn't be because they can't handle it educationally on their own so God is saying I'm giving you power and if you apply your power the right way you don't have to cheat your way in you don't have to bribe your way in you you don't have to beg your way in. You don't have to do like Judah did in the Bible and go be kissing up to somebody so you can get in. God said, I'll get you in. He said, they use their money. He said, I use my favor. He said, and favor ain't illegal. It might not be fair, but it doggone show ain't illegal. And God said, I bless who I bless. He told Moses, I have mercy on who I will. Moses, e even you, my, my prophet, you can't tell me who to favor and who not to favor, Moses. I favor somebody who you think shouldn't have nothing. I get them in Harvard. I, I, kid, somewhere, somewhere, a kid had a dream of going to USC or Harvard, and somebody told him they wasn't going to be able to go. And oh, lo and behold, God allowed these systems to start shattering, and that kid is going. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God will shatter some stuff so that you can get in. God will pull all of it down. I tell you what. Um, uh, God said, we're going to have to build it. God said, we're going to have to own it. He, he, said, he said, give him this example right here. He said, give him the example of, of sometimes it don't look good. It look real bad when God is telling you to do it. He said, but give him this example. On, a fr on, on, that, on that Friday, or on that day when Jesus Christ got crucified, it didn't look too good. It wasn't looking too good. But God said, that's an example of what I can do with you if you allow me. If you allow me to, to just let them go ahead and destroy what they thought you were. Whew. If you allow me to just go ahead and let them hit you and beat you and sting you. huh? If you allow me to just let them kick their, their vitriol and their poison and their venom at you. If you was, see, Jesus was in a system that was poisonous. It was oppressive. Don't think that what you face ain't what Jesus faced. Jesus was a Jew living in Rome. Jesus was a, was a target of hate. It was a target of not only the Romans, but even the Jews couldn't stand him. And I want you to understand that God is saying I'll flip the system if you'll allow me to use you and Jesus said God go ahead and use me after he tried to tell God don't do it a few times and I want to take it back even to before the crucifixion where Jesus got into the wilderness and the devil came and tempted him and he tried to tell Jesus if you bow down to me God said stop talking about the temptation of Jesus and start looking at it like Satan came to try to bribe Jesus but Jesus knew how to apply his his power he told the devil he said it is written he said hey 
man must not worship anybody but God. God told me to tell you that even when the devil comes and tries to bribe you, he tries to tell you what he has is more important than what God has. You see, Jesus, huh? Jesus is the last Adam. He came and did that to the first Adam, and he got over on him. But the last Adam came, and the last Adam said, you can't have my power. You can't have my anointing. You can't have my authority. You can't have salvation. You can't have resurrection. You can't have restoration. I am the Messiah, and I will not accept the bribe. I'm going to pay full price for what God called me to. I'm not trying to take a back street or an alley on my anointing. I'm going to walk in the fullness of the power of God. So one Friday came, and they crucified him, and it didn't look good. But Jesus said, Jesus said, into your hands, God, I commit my spirit. And the next thing you know, Jesus came walking out of the grave. He walked through walls. He talked with disciples. He gave them power. He breathed on them. He broke bread. He even barbecued fish on the beach with them. Jesus. Woo! A new application of power. God said, this power looks like, see, because this is the thing, and I'm, I'm uh, this is it. Jesus was a Jew, and Rome was oppressed, was oppressing the Jews. Rome was crushing them. But it didn't look like Jesus had power over them because they were crucifying him. God said, you have to understand something. He said, when I put Jesus on that cross and I let him be crucified and get put in that borrowed tomb, he said, at that point, I turned Jesus' life into a seed. I turned his life into a seed. And that's why immediately you didn't see Jesus and his gospel take authority immediately. He said, because it had to take root. Yeah, I want to tell somebody, you, you don't be in too much of a rush. You have to let it take root. You have to let your idea take root. You have to let it take root. And, and when it took root, hallelujah, when it, when it took its own case and it took its own pace, hallelujah, now, the na yeah, 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 even for mentioning the name of Jesus, I need somebody to understand that God wants to take your idea, that I, God wants to take your suffering. He wants to take your persecution, and he wants to plant it, hallelujah. And when he plants it, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Just give him a few days. He's going to raise it back up again. And when he raises it back up again, he's going to give some other people some belief in what you're doing. And before long, your idea, hallelujah, will be national and international. The gospel, hallelujah, it goes around the world to the degree where you can mention the name of any other God. But if you mention the name of Jesus, folks want to kick you out. Folks want to stop blocking your money. Folks don't want you to be able to do what you're supposed to do. Why? Because Jesus is the new application of power. Jesus is. It looks like looking like it's not going to happen. It looks like looking powerless. It looks like oppression won't stop. Jesus didn't go up to Rome and strike him down. No, Jesus stayed on his mission. And some years after he died, his ministry, his business, his institution, Christianity, became the most influential religion in the world. What does that say about you? That if you apply your power right, even in moments where it seems like they're crucifying you, God will use what you have to replace the way they act. We need some schools that are filled with kindness. Will you build one? 
We need some banks that will really help the community. Will you open up one or at least put an account in one? We need some entertainment centers that are all about wholesome entertainment. Will you make a movie, hold the lights, work the cameras? What are you going to do? This is about a new application of power. I'm going to put something up on the screen so we can prepare ourselves to give right now. As that's on the screen, I want to pray for anybody who wants to accept Jesus as your Lord or who wants to rededicate your life or who wants to be healed from physical, emotional, or spiritual pain. As you give right now, I'm going to pray. It's on the screen, the way that you can give. I'm going to pray. Father, I bless you. I come against the trap of the enemy. I come against every lie and scheme of the wicked one. I ask you to pour out your spirit upon your sons and daughters. I pray for people who want to give their hearts to you tonight, Lord, in the privacy of their homes, in the confinement of solitude, right there where they are. Lord, I ask you to accept them into your kingdom. Your word says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that we will be saved. If you're in your home right now, just confess to God. Just confess with faith, believing that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And you shall be saved. Believe right now, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, that God can forgive your sin. Believe right now that if you're struggling and believe in God to restore something to you that was taken from you, God can restore it to you. Whether it's your emotions, whether it's your health, whether it's your confidence, whether it's your finances, your career, your dream, God says, I'll restore it to you. We can take the sign down now. Thank you. And perhaps you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I encourage you to do it now. I encourage you to do it now. I encourage you not to accept Satan's bribe to walk away from your God. On this coming Friday, we will be given serving hot meals in the city of Bellflower. If you want to help us to do that, Sow a seed and designate it towards outreach. I just found out earlier today that people have been lining up where we usually give food out at all last week waiting for us to come. That means the need is great. We didn't communicate that we would be there, but it tells us that the need is great. So we're going back out Friday, and we're going to go be a blessing to them. We ask you to pray for us, for God to keep us safe, for God to keep them safe. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless your seed, and I ask God to multiply it back into your life. I decree divine favor over you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Focus your attention toward the screen. There's going to be a video that shows what we have going on for the remainder of the week. And after the video, I want to encourage you to join us for the after party where we will discuss the word of God. You can find the Zoom link for the after party on the Secret Place page. God bless you. And I pray that God really, really spoke to you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.